Hello guys, it's me, Erdos12, and today we're focusing on porting your RPG to Xbox One, especially for you guys that actually have joined the RPG makers or the Roblox RPG developing group, or if you're just an indie on your own want to make an RPG, but you don't know where to start when it comes to Xbox One. So, without further ado, let me get set up, and I'll be back when I'm set up. So we're back and I finally set up. So if you see here, we've got three things. Now remote service contains all the remote events in my game for Star Wars Saberfront. But when I actually submit a kit or you know publish a kit that you can use to set this up, it will never have all of these. It will only include this one because it's a dialogue or UI dialogue kit. Very different from the dialogue kit that I made earlier for the first tutorial that I ever made. Which was a kit that contains an NPC um, dialogue service and a script for you to actually inter make it interactable and you know custom, you know, basically the scripted dialogue in a dynamic way. But this is different. This is dialogue that is really special for your game. It this is much more helpful than an NPC because an NPC could cause lag depending on how many features it has. While this is just part of the GUI. And also it's more cleaner, more images, you don't have to worry about making any billboard GUIs or anything like that. Plus, you can also use it in quest making, which I will show you as well with, you know, game pads. Now, let's get started. The first thing you want to remember is that when you have the kit, right, make sure you duplicate this. So I'm going to duplicate this right now. And also, the next thing you would want to do is you want to get rid of all of this crap right here. Right, delete that. You will not need that. I can assure you. This is the only thing you need for now, but then you duplicate it. So now you have show dialogue, and this one's going to be called show gamepad show gamepad help dialogue. Now this is a very special version of the show dialogue. Unlike the show dialogue, this one has much more options to it, and it's also the images are not going to be included in this like this. Let me show you what I mean. So this right here is all going to go away. This is going to be like this. Now when this happens, right, it's going to have, in fact, let me undo all of that. Keep that there, but make sure you have another one of these. Duplicate it. Get rid of all of this. Except for the text label. The text label is the most important piece that you can not get rid of because the text label is what you have to use to ensure that you get the message across. So, if we want to get started, I would say, here's what you would do. I'm going to go into my models. Sorry if I have a lot of models. That's how I mo do things. I modify models so that I can, um, you know, make them better, make them fit. Like, it takes a lot of time for me to actually, you know, make new things. Even though in this, the game Vader that I'm making, I'm actually going to use, not free models, but I'm going to build it from scratch. Since it's too complex to actually find a model to use for the building. Since we have to meet a deadline, yes. But, look at this. This is the kit. Now, if you're in the RRD or know about this kit by heart like me, then you should listen to this. Now, we're only, the reason why we're, only reason why we're using this kit right here is because we have to make sure that it corresponds to a RPG. You know, an RPG. Like, we're just making it from scratch. So, I'm going to... Do that, and I'll be back when. Okay, guys, I am back, and I've set up the G the uh, RPG that we're going to be using to make this feature. Now, here's the deal about this feature. Now, the serious problem is that there are some things that aren't working, so you have to make sure that happen that they work. So this is what I'm going to do. Go to RPG Script Data Store. Sorry about that. This is the actual game that I've made so far, and. Basically, that's where it's going. 
So, this is what I would do. So, if you can see here, I am going to actually leave the leader stats like that. But, here's what I have to do. Properties.starting. If you want to know why the kit didn't work, which is originally why I actually um, started to subscribe to the RPG Makers channel, and in fact I might, and this is how I found out about the RPG Makers, I initially relied on their tutorial on how to make this better, like just to um, make a new one from scratch, and they said that the kit doesn't do much, but really, what they're saying is actually wrong. The kit does, you just gotta program it to make it work and modify things. That is how this game, my game, was actually able to get favorites because, and that's how I also got up to rank five plus in a RRD. Because if you think about it, like there are many things that could be modified in this, but you gotta know what you're doing. So, yeah, just like that. And um, another thing I forgot to mention to you was this: the XP bar frame local script change this to caps now what I've done in my game is I've taken all of those game properties out because they could pose a serious threat and vulnerability to the game in terms of exploiting so that that's just like um I think Jesse from the RPG makers said so what I did was I made a very special version of the settings. This time it was in a folder, but it was in module scripts. So each of these is a module script. And I also changed all the other scripts to use that as well. So basically you've got still got a working game. So it's not technically broken. Now another thing that I've noticed is that we also have to worry about this. What are we going to make? So this is what I'm going to make. Watch what I do. So first, I'm going to actually scout it out first because I want to see what we can do. And basically, you have the GUI here. You have everything there including the goblin and all that stuff, even the healing pond, and here's a sword. It's not much of a sword, it's just a, something you slash with, but, um, yeah. Anyways, let's get out of this, and we are going to show you what to do with the gamepad. So, First thing we're going to focus on is delete save. Now remember, I will be testing this as a follow-up to see if it works on, and on how to improve it if it doesn't work with a gamepad soon. The, uh, it's the key objective to it. It's just to get it ready for gamepad. So, I am going to go straight to... In fact, yeah. Here's what you would do the hotkey. The hotkey you would turn it into something else. So I would do this. You know, don't do wait fors or anything like they say. You would just do this. So you would do local UIS equals game get service user input service. local player equals game dot players dot local player now here's what you do with the button now if I'm not mistaken the delete save button is right here so this is supposed to be the same thing in a local script like that so open parent dot frame dot visible equals true So let's see here, we do local delete. It's actually, we do local um, 
UIs equals this, which is the table, delete save equals player dot player GUI dot delete save or player dot player GUI dot actions GUI let me go to my other place real quick I'll be back when I okay guys I'm back and what I've done is I've taken delete save right this is delete save the variable or property and then you have this which is that right delete save dot frame let me fix that or if it's not there which means if you have did what I've done you can make an action GUI then you would have player dot player GUI dot actions GUI dot delete frame so what's next well we're just going to do that for today so this is what I would do and this is going to be in gamepad one gamepad mode one so every single button actually gamepad mode one is going to be well I'll show you what the gamepad mode is but let me show you how to do the second gamepad mode so it would be like this local no not local um, right be like UIS dot input begin connect function and then this is what we would do in fact yes this is what we would do instead of doing that I would do maybe a while true do just while wait do it's not that fast but maybe every two seconds you do that and it'll be like this if uis dot is key down okay and then for key down in fact let me open up the object browser so you can see it is key down so I'll be like user input service is key down let me show you what that is hold on guys I'm going to finish this up in a few minutes key down so we're just going to do that yes if UIS it colon is key down and then you would do enum dot key code dot button. In this case, you're going to use the left button to delete your stuff. Then script dot parent dot no wait not parent uis the location dot delete save dot visible equals not uis dot delete save dot visible so you, you know what this means right this means that the uis with the lowercase s has a delete save variable or property in it which is also a frame which is why it has the visible property we're trying to make it invisible if you press it once and then make it visible again if you press it again. So basically UIS dot delete save dot visible equals the opposite. But that's if they press this button. So that we will test possibly this summer, but we're not going to test it now. Anyways, this has been Aerodos twelve here. Yes, it's the end of the tutorial. And you can leave a like, comment, subscribe do what your life tells you to do and that's it so cheers